This morning we have a, a, a fun service where I've called upon um, some, a couple people that I, I believe will be fine um, as they get up and share their story, and then a couple others that I hope will be fine when they share their story. Sometimes I, sometimes I just got to extract, you know? We got to extract. We got, God's got to put us in some uncomfortable position so we can what? We can grow, exactly. And so I want to read a scripture to you this morning, and then we will get started. Um, and that is Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. And it says this, At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I openly and joyfully acknowledge your great wisdom that you have hidden these things, spiritual truths, from the wise and intelligent, or the proud, right? And revealed them to infants, or what we would know as new believers. Listen, to those seeking God's will and purpose. Now, the individuals I'm going to call up are a little bit younger. They would be, I think, you know, sort of like the next generation. Um, but I believe that... They might, maybe not one, but they might still be new believers. But here, here's the kicker, is that they are seeking God's will and purpose for their lives. So, so some of us, we walk in here and we, and we want God to, to do um, some things in our lives. But you always got to ask yourself that question. Am I seeking the purpose and the will of God for my life? How do I do that, Pastor Eric? Well, let me just say something. You, you, you start out by getting to know who your Savior is. You build character by the character which you see in Jesus Christ. And so your mind begins to shift and change, and I've seen that in these individuals. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handled over to me by my Father, and no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except the Father, Jesus, and our Heavenly Father, God. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son, listen, I like this, and anyone to whom the Son deliberately wills to reveal Him. So, so nobody knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. Listen, until Jesus came. We could not be reconciled to God until Jesus came. And so here's the part that I want, that I want to get to you, some of you this morning. Some of you, you walked in here and, and um, man, you might be full of, of worry, anxiety. You might be full of, of stress. You might be carrying the weight of your past or your mistakes. This is what Jesus does best. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace, and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed, quiet for your souls. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. You know, the world is, is, is so desperate in having everything that even when they get everything, they always end up with nothing. And Jesus comes in and he says, look, I can reveal the Father to you if you just come to me. But he says, that's not all I'm going to do. He's all, I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to refresh your life. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to pour my mercy and grace upon you. And I'm going to give you a new life. And so I've called upon a, a handful of people to just share a little bit about their story and, and, and how they came to know Jesus and, and where they're at now and what their life is. You know, every single person that I called up is, is someone that is growing, listen, and that is serving here at HD Church. They are plugged in. They are committed. They're showing up every Sunday to their post, their, uh, whether it's you know, singing on stage, whether it's playing in, you know, as a musician in the band, uh, whether it's uh, helping with the media, running the media or cameras and everything like that. They're here every Sunday faithfully and committed. And that's why I called upon them. And so my uh, first couple of guests are uh, a young couple. And I'll let them tell you how long they've been here and I'll let them share their story. But they are um, Mr. and Mrs. Jordan Harrison. Come on up, guys. Amen. 
And if you don't know Jordan and Katie, they they run all of um, all of our media, our social media, all of our YouTube and things like that. And uh, partnered up with Jake. Jake helps. Uh, Jake is you know Jake is our sound guy. Be be rough without Jake and Daniel back there and Michelle. Um, even though they didn't communicate announcements today, but that's okay. Hey, every once in a while, the best running backs fumble the ball, and that's okay. We bounce back. All right, you guys got microphones behind you, and I will let you um, start off however you would like. You guys probably got it. I think you got to turn them on. Oh, they're switching sides. That's your good side? Okay, it's your good side for the camera. <laughs> oh, you're a lefty. You got to turn it on. Power buttons in the middle. And it'll light up got green. it, I think. All okay, right. hi. You want me to go first? Ooh. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Caitlin Harrison. Um, I've been coming to this church since um, 2014, 2015, kind of like right out of high school. Um, I started coming here because my sister, Mindy Lucas, um, would always invite me. And I was like, sure, yeah, you know, I'll go. And um, every time I came, I always was inspired by the word. And I was like, man, like, they're preaching to me. This is like, I, I need this. And so I would come all the time, and I enjoyed it. But at the time, I was 17, 18 years old. So I would go back into my regular life and get faced with challenges that put me in the same position all the time. And so I feel like I was kind of living this double life. Like, I wanted to serve God. I came to church. I would see people and, you know, women, strong women in the church that I would get inspired by and be like, man, like, that's for me. And then I would go back to, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> um, and then I would go back as a teen um, and have to keep on living that life that I was. And so, you know, it was just um, years of doing that and thinking like, man, you know, and it wasn't that I didn't um, want to. It was kind of that I was afraid to. Um, always thinking like, man, like there's no way that God has a plan for me. There's no way that God has better for me. Like, God, you see all these choices I'm making. You see the life that I'm living in the path that I'm going. Um, there's no way you have better for me. Like, I don't deserve that. And um, also too, like the fear of doing it. Like, I can't be this person. Like, right, right. God, it's not me. Like, <laughs> You, like, I'm just going to keep going the way that I'm going because that's just where I'm comfortable. And um, I'm afraid to step out of that. So, and, you know, just being in a small town and always being around um, the same things, it's just always in your head. Like, that's just how it's meant to be. Like, I'm not worthy of God's plan and God's purpose. And so I was afraid to kind of see what that is. And so time goes on. And finally, I'm like, man, you know, like, I keep coming to church. I keep hearing the word. And then I'm like, just do it. Like what, what's, what is stopping me? It's my own fear and my own self. And so I'm like, man, like God, like just lead me to your path and show me what you have for me. And I'm, and I know that I'm capable of it. And so time goes on and like really right at that season where I was like, I'm going to do better. I meet this guy and I'm like, Oh, that's, you know, a distraction right there. Like, <laughs> you know, wait, but how did you meet him? What happened? Okay. So he, <laughs> He literally messaged me on Twitter, and I was like, that's the enemy right there. Like, no way, Jose. Tegan always says that. So I was like, you know, God, I just told you. But what did he message you on Twitter? Oh, my God. <laughs> it was literally a picture of um, Steph Curry, and instead of, like, a basketball, it was a little text bubble, and I said, hey. Like, red flag. Like, no, like, distraction right there. So, and seriously, like, Eric even mentioned it at our wedding, like, I didn't respond right away, because I'm like, dude, like, there's no way, like, God, you, I just told you, like, I'm changing my life, I'm gonna serve you, and like, this guy, you know? I ended up giving it a chance, uh, and right away, our early conversations, and he'll talk more about it in his testimony, like, right away, I was like, what are your plans, what is your purpose, like, you know, I, I want better for myself, and I'm not gonna keep, like, repeating the same things that I'm doing, so, like, Either, you know, we do this together or I'll see you later. So, and then that's really how our foundation started. And so um, we just continued to serve. And for myself, I really realized that I am worthy of God's purpose and plan. And like, I'm capable of these things. And so I just continue to remind myself that um, God has a plan and God has a purpose. And um, I just continue to do that because I have daughters. And so... How old are you guys? 
28. 27 mm -hmm. um, So when you, Katie, when you were, uh, you know, when you were trying to figure things out, um, I just want you to share just real quick, and then we'll get to, to Jordan. No, 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 nothing bad. I just the joke. no, 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 not that, that. That is the joke. Yeah, that you could share that too. That was funny. Um, she didn't want to get a job when she was like 18 or 19 because she, it was going to interrupt her social life. Wow. But, 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 talk about no. where you are now and yeah. just. I mean, of course, your walk with the Lord, but, but, but education and job and family. I mean, you know, all of that. Yeah, so um, when I first came here and I met um, uh, Pastor Eric and Jess, they were just like, hey, you know, like, you're Mindy's sister, you know, what are you up to? And I was like, nothing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't have a job. I wasn't going to school. And I knew I wanted to uh, get into education. That was always my dream was to be a teacher even as a kid. But I just wasn't doing anything about it. Like, I was like, no. And then I was like, how am I going to get a job? Like, I got friends to hang out with. I got, you know, I got to have my free time. I can't do that. Um, but then, you know, once I met him was really when I was like, man, like, you know, he's a good guy. He has, you know, his life together and he's pursuing me. Like I got to get it together for myself first, but also like, you know, at the same time, like, I feel like God really did put him in my life for a reason. So I didn't want to let that go. So I'm like, man, I really got to get myself together. So he helped me with school. I started going to school, um, to become a teacher and got that done. And so now here I am, I am a teacher. And so I'm just um, happy that I get to um, use God to reach the youth because, again, I have kids. And, um, <laughs> man, these kids need it. And so I'm just proud that, you know, I, I did it with God. And God is always using me in every area of my life to just better myself. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's just rewarding. And God is good. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So I'm Jordan Harrison. Um, I am... I have been attending HD Church since about 2017, 2018. Um, so growing up, little background on myself, growing up, I didn't grow up in church. Um, I always considered myself to believe in God, but I really didn't understand what it meant to have a relationship with God or to serve God or to be um, a follower of Christ. Um, so fast forward to 2016, she kind of touched on, I, I meet her, and again, she's in the beginning of her faith walk. And she asked me, like she said, our early conversations were like, do you go to church? Um, do you believe in God? What, what are kind of like your values? And at that time, I had this feeling of like, I don't know, like my heart sunk. Like I just had a feeling of like, I don't know if it was guilt, shame, or just embarrassment that I didn't go to church and I called myself a believer. Um, so, and growing up, I, I always thought of myself as good. I was always praised for being good. I'd never got in trouble. I got good grades. Um, I was very goal-oriented, and I had aspirations, and then I, I, I put things into place to achieve those things. Um, so that's kind of my growing up, came from a good family, all, all of that. So then, fast forward, um, we get engaged. I'm going to school at the time. We get engaged after I graduate. I went to school down in San Diego. Um, so then after we get engaged, we start coming to church more often together. Um, and then that's when we started our premarital uh, meetings with Pastor Eric and, and Jess. And that's really where I got the grasp and understanding of what it meant to build a relationship with God. And not only that, to put our, build our foundation of our future marriage on God's word. Um, so at this time, I'm on fire for God. Like I, I'm, so I'm all in. Um, and um, we get to the point, we get married. A few months after that, we get baptized together. Um, and then a few months after that, so I'm maybe less than a year in coming to church and, and starting my faith walk. And then Pastor Eric reaches out to us and asks if we wanted to help out with the social media. And um, I've always enjoyed video editing, um, doing videos. I mean, all through high school, I made videos with my friends. Um, even early in our relationship, we made a little run on YouTube. So, yeah, it, that's always been a passion of mine. So now I'm getting, I'm, I'm on fire for God, and now I get this opportunity. To like, And at the time, I didn't realize the blessing that it was uh, to my life because I just saw it as a cool opportunity. Like, I love to do these things, and, and now I'm able to uh, do it. But to un now see and look back, like, that really catapulted my faith and, and understanding what it means to serve because it really opened my eyes. And, and God started to unveil to, th to me, like I mentioned, like, I was the role model friend. I had my life together. I, I, I was always considered good. And then it started to reveal to me the, um, 
the life that I was living was a very selfish life. And a lot of the things that I did uh, were always for the benefit of myself, even though it seemed like they were good things. Like I was, when I, when we were asked to do this testimony Sunday and I was kind of talking to her about like what I was going to say, like even back in high school, I would do all these volunteer work and I would work with the elderly and work with the kids. And it was all to, yeah, shine it on me and put this on my resume so I can get into college. So I, I wanted to help people, but it wasn't for the right thing, for the right reasons. Um, so God started to reveal that to me and kind of open up my heart and give me a, a check in on myself, like, um, and just being very, um, even early in, in my faith walk, just realizing like I was always seeking for what can, can God, God do for me rather than what can I do for God. Um, so then finally getting to the point to where now I'm serving and I'm assisting in the, in the media team and we're reaching, um, I'm help, helping get the word out to 2,000 plus people weekly between our Instagram and our YouTube channel. Um, and I don't take that for granted. I, I, I don't take that lightly. And, and I do feel like that has been a big part of me kind of overcoming my selfishness and understanding the importance of putting self before, or uh, putting others before myself, um, and and just getting to a point. And and I was thinking about this a few weeks back, and I was talking to her about it. All the things that had to line up, and realizing that God has always had His hand on me this whole time, and I just didn't realize it. I always thought it was of my own doing, like. I do, I'm doing well in school. I, I worked hard. That's why I went to college and I did well in college and that's why I have a good job. Um, so just finally realizing that God has had his hand on me this, this, my entire life and putting, putting me into positions and allowing things to be, to line up the way they did for me to be, um, even given the opportunity to have the opportunities that I've had in life. Um, I'm just thankful. And I was talking to her about it. They, when I was putting together the 40th anniversary, um, video. I didn't have the honor and privilege to be here when Pastor Ron was with us, but just to how thankful and grateful I am for him and Pastor Kathy even bringing this church here 40 years ago, and for Mr. and Mrs. Lucas to attend here and be faithful to the church and raise their family here, and for Aaron to hold that as a value and to invite Mindy here, and then for Mindy to see her sister struggling and invite her here. All that had to align for me to, and the fulfillment I have here and and how I feel like I'm working in God's purpose now, all the things that happened to line up for me to even be here, um, I'm just grateful for. So, And now I have the opportunity to raise my children in church and, and have them seek God for answers when, when they're, and my daughter, she, when, she, when she gets hurt or somebody gets hurt, she puts her hand on them and, and prays over them. So just seeing that, I'm just very appreciative and, and thankful to God for always having his hand on me and just me finally realizing that, that, that it's all glorious to him. And Amen. So, how long have you guys been married now? Five years. Five years. Five whole years? <laughs> and two babies. Two babies. Tegan and Reese. Yes. Reese's. Reese's Pieces. Yep. Tegan and Reese. And um, I just want to say thank you guys for, for sharing. That's... Um, you guys enjoy that? That was a good, that's a good word right there. You know, um, before we shut down, um, during the, the, the pandemic in 2020, I don't know if you remember, but during midweek, we were going through the book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John, John C. Maxwell. And in the very last chapter, it's titled, it's titled The Law of Legacy. And he says this, he says, um, a, leader's, um, a leader's lasting value is always measured by succession, right? And if you don't know what succession is, succession is, is um, you know, Pastor Juan and Kathy planting this church, having the faith to believe God for what they believed God put in their heart to reach people, right? right. That's, that's the goal. The goal is to preach the gospel, make disciples, and serve others. If you didn't know that that's our mission statement, now you know. Preach the gospel, make disciples, and serve others. But a leader's lasting value is always measured by succession. And so when you think of legacy, um, that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying like, man, if Pastor Juan and Kathy and, and, you know, the Lucas family and their kids, you know, show up now. And then they and Mindy invited her family. And now you guys are here. And now you want to teach and train your children in the ways that they should go. And so now you're being that example, the, 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 the weight of um, life, which is good, right? It's a good weight that you carry now. Um, should always be there at the forefront of your mind when you wake up is that like, okay, first we got to like, you know, you two, right? You guys 
as individuals, you got to make sure that you're lining up, right? My, my relationship, my walk. And then as a married couple, you got to make sure that you're staying connected, right? We're staying connected. We're sharing the same, you know, mission, vision, and purpose for our lives. Um, all of those things line up. Um, it's going to be really hard to not raise a healthy family. You understand? Right? If you're walking with God on a daily basis and you're loving each other the way the scripture teaches, it's going to be very difficult to not raise godly children. And so, you know, they're doing as best as they can, but, you know, they get to see the fruit. And so their, their, their lasting value will be measured by the succession, and which is their children, right? Amen. By the grace of God, you'll get to see your, your, your kids um, love and serve God. That's my dream. I always talk about that. But it, just for our children to love the Lord and see them walk in their purpose. Right. Amen. Can we give Jordan and Katie a, a good hand? No, you stay up here. Yeah, you stay up here. You just have to scoot over a little bit. Because my next guest is very special. Uh, she might faint on the way up, but that's okay because I really, really want her to share um, her story and her testimony of just, you know, very similar how God, she probably didn't realize it, but how God has had her hand upon her um, her whole life. And, you know, that's probably a lot of our testimonies, right? Some of you, God has had his hand upon you, and you didn't realize it, but, man, thank God for God. So, Valerie Galvin, are you ready? Yeah, you ready? Come on up. You can sit right here, right by me, and I'll keep you safe. She's already crying. It's okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, so a little bit growing up, um, I grew up Catholic, went to church every Sunday, um, got baptized at a really young age, did my communion, confirmation. Um, and then fast forward to high school, uh, we moved over here. I used to live in uh, San Fernando. Um, we moved over here and, you know, slowly stopped coming to church. Uh, just, I was in senior year, my senior year. So middle of my senior year, we moved over here. But um, yeah, just completely stopped. Didn't go. My parents wouldn't go either. Um, so I kind of, since they didn't go, I didn't go. That was my thing. Um, shortly after I moved out of state, um, followed a relationship. And out of that relationship, uh, Jacob came. Um, it was a. It was a very abusive, emotionally abusive, not abusive, but um, relationship toxic. He was very uh, controlling, manipulative, and. Um, after I had Jacob, I decided to move back because it wasn't just me that I had to take care of. It was my son, too. But um, we moved back, and my parents uh, took me under their wing. Uh, they helped me raise him for the first five years of his life. Um, you know, still not going to church, you know, just kind of living life day to day. Um, working, I came back, I finished school, because um, that's what my dad wanted me to do. He's like, you know, just, we'll help you as long as you complete school. So that was what I did. Um, started working full time shortly after that, and uh, Jacob got old enough to where I wanted him to do sports. So I gave Jacob the option, I said, you can either do basketball or jujitsu because one of my old coworkers had their kids in jujitsu, and Jacob chose jujitsu. So that's where um, I first met Ryan. Uh, but it wasn't right away that we started talking. Um, it was maybe a couple months after after well, he how started. How did you guys start talking? <laughs> Well, Ryan messaged me on Instagram. <laughs> it works. Social media. 
stay off social media. <laughs> um, but uh, at the time, I was in a relationship. <laughs> it wasn't really serious. It was, I think it was more, I was just trying to, that was lonely, past time, and um, yeah, it's been a while since I had been in a relationship, so. Uh, uh, so that relationship ended. Anyways, that relationship ended. Uh, Ryan had asked me out for coffee. Uh, <laughs> so my coworkers, um, they would ask me because they knew I was a single mom. Um, you know, like what was going on and I was just, you know, I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna be single forever. There's no one out there for me. I don't want to look for a relationship. I don't want to be with anyone. It's just Jacob and I, that's it. We're just gonna live life. Um, but uh, then Ryan came along and they were like, what happened? I thought you were done. <laughs> um, but Ryan was the one that really set our foundation you know, like while we were pursuing each other, uh, I saw that he was um, with the praise and worship, t worship team, uh, helped out with the youth, youth leader. Um, and, you know, it was every time I would text him, it was like, oh, what are you doing today? And he's like, well, I got church midweek service. Um, you should come. Um, I think that was the first time I came and uh, here for a service and, I remember crying during worship, and I was just, oh, like, it's really, Pastor Eric's really, like, speaking to me. Um, did Ryan tell him, like, what was going on in my life? Uh, so um, I started coming regularly, uh, and we just, <coughs> four years later, now he, like, kind of helped me, him and Eric, and Jess and Jay and Marty and all of them kind of helped me like come out of my bubble a little bit, um, encouraged me to help out with the <coughs> worship team. Um, I help out in the nursery. Uh, I have the honor of helping him out with the youth. So we just, we love coming to church and bringing our babies. Um, Emery, you know, she loves worshiping and praying and now every time we sit down to eat she makes us hold hands and pray let's pray but then it's like okay you pray no you <laughs> no you <laughs> so um trying to teach her to come out of her bubble too but yeah it's good you're good you're good you did did she do good come on how, how long have you little lovebirds been married Three and a half, four? Four. Is it four? Almost five. Oh, no. no. 2020. What Almost is it, Ryan? Four. Can you, can you, uh. Almost four. In La February, you'll be four. Can you do what Lawrence does? No. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty good. Three, three, a whopping three years and five months. <laughs> that's good. And Jacob is nine. Jacob is nine. Jacob is nine. And they have Jacob and they have. Emery. Emery and, and uh, Ryan has just, um become one of the best dads to Jacob. That's his son, and uh, he loves him very much. And uh, they have Emery, who's a little blessing at two and a half, and, and uh, baby Nora. Baby Nora is a handful. She's 10, nine? Seven months. Seven months, I don't know. I don't even know how old my own kids are. Anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> but I am proud of them, because I got to watch their um, I got to watch their their story unfold. Actually, I got to, actually, I, I got to the privilege of marrying Jordan and Caitlin, and then I had the privilege of marrying Ryan and Valerie. Um, Cause you know, I'm, I don't play around. You know, you guys want to be seeing each other. Don't be wasting each other's time. You both love the Lord, all right. You both in good places in your life. Well, what are we waiting for, all right? So uh, you know, look at some of you guys. <laughs> Not going to Pastor Eric, <laughs> but they're. Um, you know, listen, I'm a, you know, I'm a stickler, like, <clears throat> I love the world as far as the people go in the world, right? I love them. I want to see them uh, come to know Jesus, but I hate the things of the world, 
the things that go against the scripture. Right. And, and, and listen, if there's a time right now where, where the world is trying to destroy the design of family, it's right now. If there's a time where the world is trying to destroy a, a, a godly relationship between a man and a woman to become husband and wife, to bear fruit that we would call children that are blessings that we're able to raise up and teach and, 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 and have that. It, it, like none of, the, none of the, these couples and their families, I'm, I know they're not perfect. I know they're not. I know they're not. But I know they love the Lord and I know they want to do right. And I know they want to raise their children and themselves in the things of God. And, and I know that that's, that's got to be something that's important in our lives, right? So no matter where, listen, no matter what has gone on in your life, listen, if you have that desire to, to, to love and to be married again, well, that's fine. That's a good desire. That's a godly desire to have a husband or to have a wife or to have a family, that's a good thing, and I'm not going to sit back and allow the world to, to, to tell us otherwise or try to destroy it, all right? I believe in the design through the scripture, and that's what I believe, and that's what I choose to believe, and I remember when Ryan and Valerie were, you know, dating, whatever, um, Ryan came over to the house for Thanksgiving, and um, obviously, you know, Valerie's a lighter shade of color than Ryan, and uh, Ryan walked in, and he's all, hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I looked at him, and I was like, why is there white stuff all over your nose? And he's all, what? And I go, you have white stuff all over your nose. And he's all, oh, I was giving Valerie a hug. I go, on her face? I go, what are you doing, brother? So I said, hey, you guys, listen to me. You better cut that out right now. No, I'm just kidding. I did it. But I remember when they walk, he walked in like that. And so I'm thankful for their lives. Listen, I'm thankful for their lives. Um, like I said last week, they help lead our youth ministry um, together. They have their own family, and they 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 got a full load, you know, with jobs. Ryan is a, a teacher at uh, RFK High School, and uh, Valerie works here at um, Aronis, Aronis, and so they got they got a full plate. I know Jordan and Katie, same thing. They got full time jobs. They're busy, but I love their commitment um, to God, and I love their commitment to their house. That's really important. And so um, as, we, as we wrap this up, I just had one more person that God had put on my heart um, to share a little bit about his story. And um, he's still fairly new here. I'm going to pull his chair up a little bit. He's still fairly new here. But I just wanted him to share his, his, his life story with you and, and um, just what God has done for him, where God has brought him. And, and like I said, just many of you don't know his story, but he has a good story and um, I'll let him come up and share that with you. And that is Mr. Cesar Luevano. Did I say it right? Almost. Dang it. Almost. Can we give him a round? So if you guys don't know, um, how long have you been here now? Two years. You guys don't know Cesar. Cesar um, started serving with us a couple years ago. One year? No, it's been longer because I saw a picture. You're going on two years. Yeah. Um, but he started serving with us. And, and you know, for me, it's been... Um, it's been a blessing to see, uh, to see guys like him, to see guys like Rawl. Uh, where did Rawl go? Right here. Oh, all right. So see guys like Rawl, um, just young, young people committed. But listen, but using their gifts and talents, right. using their gifts and talents to, to serve um, the Lord. And uh, Brother Ryan, um, of course, Sister Clay, I would never forget about you. You are the goat. You've been here. If you don't know what that means, it's not a bad thing. It means the greatest of all time. So you are the goat that you've been playing keys um, for, for the Lord and for our family for how long now? 38 years. And, um, and then of, to see young, younger, you know, like Valerie and uh, Nikki and, and Nev and uh, Sister Irene and Sylvia that sang for so long. Just to see people committed is, is such a blessing to my heart. Amanda as well, but I'm still mad at her because she left. Remember, she left a while back when she had got married. So I got I to gotta allow that God to heal my heart from that. <laughs> but, but listen, but Caesar's been with us for a couple years now. And, um, and I know he's known the Lord for a while. And I'll let him share a little bit about his life story um, with you guys. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Caesar. <laughs> um. Basically, my faith, I was born in the church, basically. My mom, um, 
would bring me to church. I'm uh, the youngest out of five, and uh, she had me at 44 years old. So <laughs> uh, she called me the miracle baby. Uh, she wanted one more, and she was asking the Lord for a son. Um, it's funny that uh, Pastor Eric would mention, you know, the kids running around and, and, and the kids being here after hours and the Saturdays, the, the midweeks. Um, Mom was all about that. <laughs> she was someone that was uh, at church constantly. And by constantly, it was, it was you know, we get, I, I would get dragged by the year. You know, it's, it's time to get ready to church. Uh, you had your, your Sunday clothes, your Sunday shoes, and, and she would take me. Uh, she made sure I was there. Um, and I can remember being as young as five, six years old, falling asleep on a Tuesday Bible night. Uh, you know, they were back there in, in, a, in a conference room, and uh, I was out here with the kids just playing around and falling asleep. <laughs> but that was a weekly thing. That was a Sunday. That was Saturdays, right? And um, and as I grew up, I I stood more for it, right? I, I started to understand the reason behind it. I started to see why. Um, and, and I saw her commitment to being in the house of the Lord. Um, I remember this one time. I don't know how familiar you guys are with Bakersfield Streets, but uh, we had a Saturday. They were giving out food and clothes on a Saturday. It was about 100 degrees. And we didn't have a ride. <laughs> My brother, uh, how I was raised is my mom and my brother, and um, he was at work that day, and and we didn't have a ride, Um, and (laughs) I remember in my head, I'm probably around Jacob's age, eight or nine, and I'm thinking, yeah, somebody's going to come pick us up, you know, it's it's pretty hot out there, (laughs) and um, and my mom's like, all right, let's go, and we start walking, (laughs) so if you kind of know the big streets, we walk from... um, Right where uh, what the Guadalupe Church is, right off California, down to Mount Vernon, the street was on Potomac, <laughs> and uh, and I just remember kind of like looking at her, you know, she was probably what, 53, 54, you know, and I'm like, all right, what what happens if mom uh, passes out? What happens if uh, you know a dog comes out or something? <laughs> But that was her commitment. That was her wanting to be there for the church. That was her way of helping. Uh, even though we walked all that way, I just remember going to the shade, getting some water, and she was right at the table helping out, pulling the clothes out, pulling the food out. Um, and she wanted that for me as well. She, <laughs> any time that there was a, a chance for you know children's church, for anything, dramas, uh, plays, uh, yeah, Caesar will do it. <laughs> I was like, again? It's like, yep. You're either going to be on the cross or you're going to be one of the soldiers, but you're going to be in the play. <laughs> um, or you're going to be Moses with the little staff. And, and, and that was mom. That was, her name is Maria, Maria Luevano. And, and um, the other side I saw was my brother, you know. Um, at the age of 13, um, my, my dad passed away. Um, and he took over, and he was there before, you know. My brother's very silent, very to himself. Uh, he grew up working a lot. He grew up knowing only work, and, and what I saw in him was that he helped my mom in every way that he could, right? Whether it was taking us to church, whether it was being there, he attended. Uh, I've never ever heard him complain about being there and it was just every day like every sometimes it was every day there would be some you know days where they would have like a five day seven campaign (laughs) outside in a tent uh you know different guest speakers we would be there early mom would be the usher um they would make me go over there you know help find something to do find something to help with and um, and he was there. He 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 still is. He serves and uh, he serves with his family. Um, it was a hard time to see. Uh, 
it was a hard time to see my mom, you know, through those years of, of my dad passing away. Because even though I didn't spend as much time with my dad uh, in my early years, um, well, everyone else did, you know, my family. And, and I saw her pain, you know, when, when they gave her that news. And I also saw her resilience and her trust in God during those times. Because the church was there. The people of the church came together and, and were there for her. And, you know, at 13, you're, you're figuring things out, even at 28. <laughs> And uh, you're seeing, you know, these different things, and you want to do your own thing. You want to be your own self. I had uh, some years of rebellious ways. You know, I was one of those kids that was trying to sag my pants and stuff, and, <laughs> and my mom would get on me. You know, you're not showing up to church like that. <laughs> We're pulling pants up. And, uh, and e even after, you know, that, um, we still kept on that path. And she made sure that I kept on that path, um, speaking to me, talking to me. I remember there was mornings where, you know, I would just come over to see what she was doing. She was big, big Bible, you know, one of those that, you know, if you throw at someone, <laughs> oh, you're going to hurt them. <laughs> and, uh, and well, she couldn't see well, so <laughs> it was bold letters and, you know, <laughs> but, you I know. Like my mom right there. I was like, you, Pastor Kath. <laughs> And um, always, you know, and writing stuff down, highlighting. Yeah. You would open that Bible up. It was highlighters and, and scriptures and, and then the five notebooks next to her that she had already written and stuff on, uh, keeping everything together. And, um, and as, as I grew older, uh, my, my, my high school days at BHS, um, she, she encouraged me more to be a part of the church. You know, I like sports. I like playing um, different sports, but I was really dedicated to soccer. <laughs> but as many of you know, there's, there's Sundays where, you know, there's sports as a, as a kid, and you want to be out there. Well, well mamas no, you're going to be at church, and we're going to find a way for you to play during the week, play on a Saturday. But uh, on Sunday, we're going to go to church. And on Thursday night, we're going to go to church. If there's practice on Thursday night, sorry, but you're going to church. And, uh, and under, I mean, at that time, you know, kid, teenage years, I was, you know, man, I got to go out there, you know. <laughs> but she made the right choice. She guided me in a way that I knew what day it was, and I knew where I had to be, and it was a church. Um, even through the rebellious stuff, even through, um, you know, when I was younger, I, I would think, well, dad's gone, and, you know, my brother was there, but um, I would try to make myself think of that thought, you know, well, oh, I don't have my dad with me, but God blessed us. He blessed us because my brother made sure I was well. My mom made sure of it. She guided me. She... Uh, when I turned 18, that's when, you know, reality hits a lot of us, right? You're out of high school. You're out of your daily routines and, and school August through July or June. And now you school or, or work, and, you know, it kind of punches you in the face. <laughs> the reality does. And um, God bless me. He, he gave me the opportunity to head out of, out of Bakersfield to Iowa and play soccer for a college out there. And... Um, as I lived out there, I, I realized the importance of mom and, and the church because it guided me to stay in the church. When I was out there, you know, Sundays were kind of like our, our days off as season was, but um, something in me said, you know, find, find somewhere. Uh, find a church, right? And uh, I was blessed to be there, and on Sundays I would go to this church and uh, have service, um, it came to the point where, you know, I was uh, allowed to play and uh, uh, given the opportunity to play drums for them. Um, and that was the other thing of, of being at the church and being involved in the church. As a kid, uh, you find stuff to do. 
And a lot of people know the drums are just there. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how it starts. Um, uh, being involved and in, 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 in her having me there, you know, they just, one day told me to just get on the drums. I was probably 12, 11 years old, not knowing anything. And, and as I grew up into the 18, uh, 20 years old, and when I came back after two years, um, she started, you know, her health started to, to get um, worse. Um, her liver was, was failing a lot. And, uh, you know, she had a liver transplant. Um, and as, a, as I'm talking about her, it's just, you know, I, I know it's a testimony about me, but she was there, you know. She was what guided me through those teenage years. She was what, um, what I saw as an example. And um, something told me, you know, it wasn't something. It was God told me, you know, stay back. Stay here. Stay with your mom. And that's what I did. I didn't go out anymore to, to play. I, I stayed here. And it was one of those things where I became even more involved in the church. And it's different at that stage because now you're doing it, you know, as, as Jordan and, and, and Caitlin mentioned, you're doing it because you want to praise God. You're doing it because you realize the, the work that goes into it, the, the things that go into the service, into, uh, into the outreach of people is because you want to praise God. And um, I remember being involved a lot with the worship team, being able to uh, go to these different churches and be invited uh, as, as our own church, you know, and, and have campaigns and, and being able to serve in, in outreaches where, you know, it was Saturday nights, um, 7 p.m. till 10, putting tents out, putting uh, speakers, the worship set together. And, and, and even though my mom at that time was sick, she would be out there still, you know. But at that stage, I started to see what God does in, in, in people, what God does for us. I really started to see the, the change that comes with being consistent, I started to see the change that she had showed me um, is proven, you know, as you attend the church more, as you're more involved, your life starts to change. It's not only a, a I am a believer, but it's a, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's worship, it's, it's, and being a Christian is what I am, you know. And uh, I know we were talking about legacy and you, Pastor Eric, you were mentioning this stuff, and, and she left me with all of that. You know, at age uh, 21, uh, she passed away. And uh, thank you. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And um, I remember as uh, um, in the final, you know, minutes, moments, um, I was able to be holding her hand. And uh, I remember one of my friends, um, JD, he, he plays guitar. And, and they were there, and his parents were there, and then my family was there. And, uh, and I remember that. We were just singing hymns in the last last minute, last last minutes, and uh, and that's that's beautiful, you know. God blessed me with her. God blessed me with a, a great mom that gave me strength. That every day now that I I live, I remember, you know, the church. I remember my part that I have to do to follow God, to follow Jesus, to be involved. And, uh, and it led me to HD. <laughs> um, in a good way, in a very great way. Um, I was wanting to grow. I wanted to do 
I was seeking growth. And to be honest with you, I just didn't know where to really to turn. Just asking God, I want to grow more. I, in, in my life as, as, a, as a man, as a growing and a work, um, and I met Ryan and I met Eric through, through friends. Um, we would do jiu-jitsu in, a, <laughs> in a Ryan's apartment. We weren't supposed to. Um, <laughs> And slowly, you know, we, we, I started to see um, who they are, uh, how they walk in life as examples. And they invited me here to, to be able to help them, to not help them, but be able to have the opportunity to help because that's what it is. And I thank them for that. Thank you. And what I saw in the church as I walked in is men with growth. <laughs> and that's something that, you know, as I said earlier, I was able to get invited to these various churches to be part of worship teams and, and you know, campaigns and stuff. But when you see a church where there's, there's men raising up families to come to church, men raising up children to, to be here, it's very good. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's something that, unfortunately, you don't see a lot. But I felt that sense of community in the, in the, in the men's fellowship, you know. And as, as we gather on certain Tuesdays a month, when you come in, you see this whole uh, side of chairs filled with men that want to go ahead and, and, and be better and pursue, you know, uh, leadership and wanting to be in a community where we strive for that. And above all, help each other. And ask God for help, because that's sometimes hard to do for us as men. Um, but I saw growth in, in many areas. Thank you, Pastor Kathy. Every time she saw me, she just smile, say hi. Smile, say hi. <laughs> and she's always been really good to me. Um, uh, Papa Joe. <laughs> uh, all you leaders out there, the ushers, uh, as you guys know, I try to shake all your guys' hands when I come in, and uh, and God has shown me that there's so much growth that I could achieve, um, and that I want for myself, and so many things to be excited about in the future, so many things that um, are to come, and I thank God for for my mom, for my brother, for you guys. For Pastor Eric, for, for Ryan, for Marty, for Jay, Val, um, for the friendship and, and true friendship, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of stuff that will be uncomfortable, but when you have people around you that pull you up instead of driving you down, there's a change. And I know Mr. Lucas says that, and, and I like that. I like that because it is, it is true. It help you pull you up. Thank you, guys. Man. Well, can we give them all a, a, a round of applause? Let's stand this morning. Isn't God good? That's right. God is good? And all the time? Ah, oh, we messed it up. God is good? And all the time, amen. Well, I want to pray, and I just want to thank you guys for sharing um, your hearts. Um, that was a blessing. And I think it's, I think it's, um, I don't think I know it is, I believe it is, it's good to, it's good to hear stories from our fellow, fellow um, brothers and sisters. You know, we don't, sometimes we don't know about the lives, you know. I didn't know, Candy, you were a kingpin drug cartel traveling <laughs> from state to state. I didn't know that. But thank God he delivered you from that. And I thank God that we have someone here that has our back in every way. So praise the Lord. No, I love you, Candy. I love you and your family very much. But we don't know the stories of that. Um, you know, Caesar's been um, just a blessing to, to us in this house. Um, he's faithful. He's committed. And he's been a blessing to, to myself and, and Ryan. Uh, he's, like, um, he's like our little brother. 
you know, and, and when he says things like that, it, it just, it blesses my heart because I'm telling you right now, that's what we all need. We all need that Paul and Timothy relationship, right? We all need, uh, we all need to have those, those close relationships where we're learning and growing from one another, where we're seeing examples set before us. And then, you know, we're saying like, man, like, you know, like I, I, I desire that. I want that change, you know, or, or we're challenging one another, you know. And so I hope my prayer is that, um, you know, each uh, one of these individuals um, has just encouraged you this morning through their word. Let me just say something to you this morning before we close in prayer is that um, God, is, God is truth and the truth that's in God's word is the only truth that will ever set you free from whatever it is that, that, you, that you're going through. Now with that said, God, um, God calls us new creations in him. He says that your old life has passed and you can begin a new life with him. And the way that that, that occurs is through the sacrifice that he made on the cross of Calvary. When God sent Jesus to die in, in our place, right, he shed his blood for us. And that blood, um, uh, that blood was a sacrifice um, for an atonement for our sin. So it, it, that's why Jesus came. Most of us know this, but let's talk about it for one, one minute. That's why Jesus came, because he lived the life perfectly, right, without error, without flaw, without sin, all throughout the scripture, we'll see that Jesus was without sin. Now, you and I, that's not us. That's for sure, right? We've, all of us in here have fallen short. We've all fallen short. But because of that sacrifice that was made on the cross of Calvary, because of the life, the death, the burial, and most importantly, the resurrection, that's why he is the son of God. That's why he's the savior of the world, and that's why he is the Messiah. Listen to me, and that's why he's still alive today, and that's why each one of these individuals can tell you that they don't know how or they don't know why, but God's hand was upon them. Listen, he is the great orchestrator. You just got to believe that. And so when I say that you can come to him and be forgiven of your sins, that you can start a new life in him, that you don't have to remain the same, that there's no sin that is too big for God's grace that God can change your life and that, listen to me, and that God does have a purpose and a plan. Man, he's amazing at, 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 at reconciling and restoring us. He's so good at it. But, but you got to believe that for yourself. You got to believe, man, that, that, that I know that God has good things for me. His plan and his purpose, it's good for me. I know that, that this, this ride of life will take me up and down. We know that. Jesus tells us straight up, right? In this life, you're going to have what? Trials, tribulations, problems are going to come. But we also know that in the word, it tells us to what? Count it all what? Joy. And joy is only something that you can have when you have a relationship with Jesus. And when you have, listen to me, when you have joy, that's when you get to have rest. And so... As we continue to live this life on this earth, an abundant life, a fruitful life, a life full of joy where we're resting, we're not worried and anxious anymore. If we desire that, let me tell you something, it only comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we, before we leave this place this morning, I want to give you an opportunity. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, I just want to pray. If you're in this place this morning and you are saying, Pastor, Eric, man, I enjoyed listening to everybody's testimony. You might have your own testimony of how God saved you and delivered you from, from some dark things. I'm sure I, I know most of your testimonies in here. But you're just saying, man, I, I, I would love to have that. I would love to have joy and true peace. I would love to have a relationship with God that is strong. I would love to be forgiven. I would love for my past to be forgiven, for shame to be, to be removed from my life. I would love for his grace to be poured upon me. If that's you this morning and you're saying, I just, can I just make some things right with God, Pastor Eric? Can you pray for me? Would you just lift your hand? Would you just lift your hand? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your hands that have gone up. Thank you so much. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved. So this morning, I want to pray. And if you're in this place and you're saying, man, that, that's me. I, I want that. I want God to forgive me. I want a new life in him. I want to be made new. 
I want to I be, be put on a good path, then would you do me a favor? Would you repeat this prayer after me? Just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning that your hand has been upon me, that you've never left me, you've never forsaken me. And this morning I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I thank you this morning for sending your son Jesus that you loved very much to die in my place, to shed his blood for my sin. And so I ask you right now, Lord, to make me new. Create in me a new and clean heart. Help me, Lord, overcome my struggles, my pains, my past. And I thank you that I believe this with my heart through the faith that you've given me that now I'm made new in you by your grace. I thank you for this new life, and I choose to trust in you. I'm saved, I'm delivered, and I'm made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much this morning, church. I pray you were blessed. We have food and refreshments out back, and we have a quick meeting. So we love you guys. Great. Praise the Lord. I don't want to take any more time, but we are going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Amen. Oh, now the lights are on. I can see you guys. Amen. Uh, so I hope that you're smiling. Some of you are. I don't know about your smiles. They need to be a little bit more brighter. Amen. But uh, we're just going to share a quick story out of Genesis chapter 22. And I, I believe it's, it's an, this is one of my favorite. It's an awesome story uh, about Abraham. Amen. And in verse number one, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. How many of you know that this uh, test or this tax that God gave Abraham was not easy? Amen. This was a child that he had been believing for for years. For years he wanted a son. For years he believed for a son and we all know the story of Abraham and Sarah. We know that they went through so many different challenges and changes and tried to help God and did all kinds of things. But finally, God gave him the promise. Amen. And, uh, and then, I'm not real sure. I think the boy was maybe 12, maybe, Doc Rogers, maybe 12, 13. But I, I know he wasn't a baby. He was, a, he was already grown. And God said to Abraham, I want you to take your son, your only son. Now, isn't it interesting that he says, whom you love? Whom you love. God knew that he loved him. Why would God say that? Why would God say, whom you love? I mean, we, we have children. We know. We have grandchildren. We know we love them. We know that. God said that for a reason. There was a reason why God said, this is the one that you love. This is the promise. This was the answer that you have been waiting for. And now, now I'm going to find out who you really love. Amen. I'm going to find out if you really love me, Abraham, and you're willing to sacrifice, then I'm going to know. I'm going to know that you have faith that you have faith in me. And Abraham did, because if you go on to read, it says, I'm not going to read it, but it says, Abraham got up, loaded the donkey, took his, his uh, two servants and his son Isaac, and they went, they cut the wood, they took everything, they loaded the donkeys, and they went off on their journey. And then they got to the, to the mountain where God said to be. They unloaded everything. And what did Abraham say? Wait here until... My son and I come back. He knew. He knew from the very moment God instructed him to the very moment when he was going to do it that one way or another, we're coming back. My son and I are coming back. We're coming back. 
Amen. Amen. God just asks us to listen, to obey, and to do what he instructs us. Really, that's what God asks because God, God, almighty God, even though he asked such a hard task, knew, he knew that that one way or another, Abraham was going to come back with his son. Whether he sacrificed him and, and God raises him or we find out later that right when he's about to do it, God said, stop, for now I know. Now I know, Abraham, that you trust me, that you have faith in me. And you know what? When we learn to trust God and when we learn to have faith in God and when we learn to say, God, whatever it is that you have for me to do, I'm more than willing to do it. And when God asks us to present and honor him with our tithe and with our offering, man, we should be the first one to say, God, whatever it is, I'm willing. I'm willing. No, how, no matter how hard it is, I am willing to do what you ask me to do. Amen? And can we do that, church? Can we be that kind of church that says, I'm willing. I'm willing to do whatever it is that you need me to do, Lord. You need me to be um, an honorable person and present my tithe and offering, then that's what I'll do, God. We all have to start somewhere. Amen? All of us, we all start somewhere, but God honors it. God honored the, the very faith that Abraham had when he took his son because he could have very well have said, no, I waited a long time for this promise, God. There has to be something else. But he didn't. He just went and did what God said. Uh, that sounds really good, but sometimes we don't always do it right away, right? Sometimes we hesitate. Come on, I'm not the only one. Right? I'm not the only one that says, well, now, God, just a second. <laughs> but um, it's better if we just obey. Amen? Amen. Ushers, if you would go ahead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Jason, you need to come up and pray for the offering. Amen. Congratulations to you and Miss Martha. <laughs> Amen. God is good. You know, um, in the in the account where Abraham was taken with Isaac, um, he said, "Me and the lad are going up to worship." So his his sacrifice was an act of worship, and it is for us as well. Amen. It's an honor to worship God with our offering. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and we worship you, Lord. We worship you with what you have given us, Father. We know that the seed that we have, Lord, that you give it to us. And, Lord, we know that you're the one that also blesses it. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that it is in good ground and that it will accomplish what you send it to do. We thank you for everybody that's giving, Lord. And we thank you that your word says that they will be blessed. Father, so we receive that blessing that comes from you, and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.